Sean, Sean and Blake. Good morning. I'd like to call the 9.30 Wednesday, February 10th meeting of the North Carolina ABLE program to order. Hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, the meeting is being recorded and subject to public records request and there will be a public comment period for organizations or individuals to address the board. Several requirements that are uh, placed upon us by law uh, for remote meetings will take roll call by name. If you leave the meeting at any point, please announce your departure. If you return, please announce your return. Likewise, state your name before speaking. All votes will be by roll call and without objection, anybody who makes the motion or second will be considered a yes vote. Finally, text or other recorded communications between board members during the meeting, even on uh, personal phones, are public records to the extent they concern the meeting. Our ethics awareness and identification of conflicts of interest. I'd like everyone to please look at the agenda and the material and see if you have a appearance or an actual potential conflict of interest regarding matters that are before us. Hearing none, uh, we have statement of economic interests that have been updated for the following board members, myself, uh, Commissioner Grace, uh, Member Wright, Member Kinsley, uh, Tom Causey, as well as uh, Ms. Boskin, who was the uh, Commissioner of Banks designee. And in the appendix, you'll find these SCI reports and evaluation letters, which are also become part of the meeting minutes. Uh, with that, we'll uh, proceed with uh, uh, joining me in our Pledge of Allegiance. So. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you all. Uh, we'll start uh, with uh, the calling of the roll. Yes. Uh, good morning, Treasurer Falwell. Uh, we do have Commissioner Ray Grace on the line. Um, I'll call each person's name. Thank you, Commissioner. Ben Wright. Here. Good morning. Melinda Plew. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Marquita Robertson. Here. Good morning. Good morning. And Chris Egan. Good morning, Mrs. Chris. Very good. Treasurer, we do have a quorum. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Our first uh, item of business is the approval of the minutes of November 12th. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. And a second? Second, second Melinda. Chris. Thank you, Melinda. So it's a motion by uh, Commissioner Gray, second by um, Ms. Plew. Any further discussion? If not, call the roll. Okay. Treasurer Falwell, your vote? Ben Wright. Aye. Thank you. Marquita Robertson. Aye. Thank you. And Chris Egan. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll now go to um, item number four and turn it over to uh, Mary B. with the uh, to discuss the Able Alliance Manager Search. Very good. Thank you, Treasurer Falwell, and good morning, Board. Uh, we're under tab two in the meeting materials. Um, this is just an update on an ongoing um, project that we have had. We've touched on this a few times in prior board meetings. Um, as you know, the current program manager for the National ABLE Alliance, uh, which we are part of as the NC ABLE program, is a census. We have that team on the phone today. Their contract does expire at the end of this year on December 6th. Uh, the National ABLE Alliance did decide to issue an RFP for these services. That RFP was issued last December 1st of 2020. We did receive uh, bids in 
by uh, the deadline of January 25th, and those bids are now being um, reviewed and assessed. It is anticipated that uh, Illinois, as the lead state in the procurement um, in council with the other states within the alliance, will determine by mid-March, March 15th or so, the decision around uh, the award of that contract. Following that decision, as a alliance member state, this board will be asked to uh, decide whether they'd like to um, continue in the alliance and uh, commence negotiations for an implementation agreement with the provider uh, or to assess whether there's a different structure uh, that the board would want to pursue. Um, staff is working closely, of course, with the alliance and will come back with a recommendation as we know more. And in all likelihood, we will need to call a special board meeting to meet the deadlines required um, for completing the implementation agreement. So there's no action required today, but we did just want to continue with that update and certainly answer any questions that you may have at this time. Questions from board members? Uh, our current administrator is? A census is and the did, program manager. Didn't the census just go through an acquisition or a merger in the last three weeks? That was, um, that was announced. I'm not aware of one in the last three weeks, but we do have Rich De Silva on the okay. line. I know there had been one previously. There may I may be mistaken, so uh, we'll get to that when we get to Rich. Go ahead, Rich. I'm sorry. I was just going to intervene that there have been a couple of acquisitions within the last uh, several months. Uh, census seems to be an acquisition mode, but they were small and related to the retirement side of the business. But didn't one of them involve bb and t Truist? Yes. Yes, oh, it did. Okay. That's why I'm that's, – that's a North Carolina company. That's why I was ringing a bell. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying my mind there. So. You're welcome. Okay. Stay on the line in case you need to clarify my mind again. <laughs> um, we'll now go to uh, – any further questions for Mary's report? Okay. Oh, this is Ray. Yes. Treasurer Falk. Uh, this is one quick question. I'm wondering what, if any, uh, additional vetting we will do of, uh, of the greater vet. The question was, what, addi what additional vetting would we do in addition to what Illinois is the lead of the consortium is going to be doing? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gray. So I am participating in what the Alliance is calling the um, – small group contract team. Um, so I am representing our organization as we go through those RFP responses. It's anticipated that there will be a finalist round as well as a BAFO round, best and final offer, um, before a decision is finalized. Um, just given the um, state of the pandemic, there is not a plan for an on-site due diligence trip that would normally be part of a procurement, uh, but there will be a virtual meeting with those um, finalists is the plan at this point. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, Follow-up to Commissioner Grace's question, is it public record who the, the uh, responders are? Not at this point in time. We're still under the confidentiality agreement right. as an active procurement. And uh, I think I should have known the answer to that before I even asked it. Um, and it's pretty accurate to say that no member of this consortium can actually make it on, on their own as far as the economies of scale. There still is great value in this consortium in terms of the number of participants. That's definitely my opinion. Okay. Yep. And that will translate into the fees and whatever ultimately get negotiated with whoever it is that would be bid <laughs> Exactly. Out. Exactly. Yeah. By working with a larger group, we're getting those economies of scale of both assets and number of accounts. And is this uh, contract up for renewal or was it, did it have any extensions to it? Um, this was the original term. 
there was the opportunity to extend, but the alliance wanted to go out for RFP. Okay. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, uh, legal updates. Good morning. I have uh, two legal items for you. Um, the first is the annual report that's required to the General Assembly that's required by the, uh, by the uh, North Carolina uh, ABLE statute. Uh, this is similar. It's in, uh, the draft is in your materials. It's similar to the report uh, approved um, and sent by the board. Uh, the last several years. Um, there's an introduction structure of the program and we've updated the performance similar to um, similar to last year. Um, call out on the um, the accomplishments, the changes, um, you'll, the items you've heard about in board meetings, train the trainer, uh, community um, community partnerships. Um, with the board's approval, it'll be signed by the chair and sent to the uh, General Assembly and um, copies um, to actually several several entities at the um, at the General Assembly. But uh, glad to uh, take any questions on the report. Okay. Questions? All right. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept? the uh, annual report to the General Assembly. So moved, Chris. Okay, Chris makes a motion. Uh, Commissioner Gray second. Uh, no. Sorry? I'm happy to second. Oh, oh, thank you. I was, it happened. I couldn't tell who was saying what. So uh, with that, uh, any further discussion? If not, the clerk will call the roll. Okay. Treasurer Follow, your vote? Aye. Ben Wright? Aye. Melinda Plew? Aye. Marquita Robertson? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. The second item. Is uh, it's a brief update on federal ABLE regulations. Uh, in September, the uh, the final uh, federal ABLE regulations were published by the uh, Department of, uh, of Treasury. Um, the draft regulations were actually in 2015, so it's been a, been a while. Um, we're there. They were effective on January one of this year, but uh, programs have a two-year transition period, and we're working with the census, um, also working with the uh, National Association of State Treasurers on reviewing and implementing any any changes um, in the regulations from our uh, uh, current practice. But um, let me just briefly highlight uh, four items. Um, um, that have come up in the discussion of the regulations. The first is uh, around who can open and manage an account. Um, y y you know, as, you, as you may know, in, under the North Carolina statute, um, not only can the account owner um, open and manage an account, but someone, an agent under a power of attorney, legal guardian, um, and uh, parent, um, or as of uh, change to the statute last year, sibling. Um, the, the Treasury regulations lay out a, a hierarchy of, uh, you know, sort of first to last who's, who's um, authorized under the regulations, and, and it goes down from the agent under the power of attorney, legal guardian, spouse, parent, sibling, grandparent, representative, payee for uh, uh, Social Security. And so the issue really is around reconciling uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the two approaches and um, um, three items in that regard. The federal regulations refer to unable to establish. You don't get to the hierarchy unless the account owner is unable to establish an account. So the question's around, does that, appears to mean lack capacity. Does that require a court determination? 
um, or is it left to individual programs, in other words, um, state law, which you know, would be consistent with the state's role in deciding capacity issues. Um, the second issue um, around opening and managing an account is, is does the regulation with this hierarchy require these entities to be able to open and manage an account, or does it just permit it for purposes of whether an ABLE program is, uh, is qualified under federal law? Uh, the third item is around certification. Uh, there is a, a self-certification um, process for guardians, parents, et cetera, under the, um, under the federal regulations. Um, we re currently require documentation for guardians, power of attorney, parents, um, that sort of thing. So um, you more to come on working through that, but, you know, once again, as an alliance um, and with uh, um, a census. Uh, the, the second topic, um, just briefly, is around uh, disability certification. As a reminder, eligibility for ABLE based on uh, either SSI, SSDI eligibility, or a disability certification. Um, and the, f the federal regulations take the approach that anyone authorized to open an account, um, that hierarchy I mentioned, um, can provide that certification. And that's uh, d different from the, 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 um, the current approach uh, taken by a census, so that's something that we're, we're working through as well. Um, third is around contributions under the able to work um, provisions in the federal able statute. Um, as a reminder, the the standard contribution limit is based on the gift tax exclusion, which is currently fifteen thousand dollars a year. But an account owner can contribute um, more in. in uh, in addition to that amount, up to the amount of his or her uh, earnings or um, the federal um, poverty li one person poverty limit for the prior year. And so the, the issue uh, uh, addressed that I want to highlight um, under the federal regulations is the certification process. There is a certification by the account owner or one of those authorized individuals in the hierarchy um, regarding the, um, the additional uh, con contributions under the able to work provisions, it, in specifically a certification that the account owner is employed and the compensation contributions did not exceed um, the limit, uh, the federal limit. And then finally, uh, just briefly, on the uh, qualified disability expenses, it continues the emphasis on broadly defining QDEs. Um, and in particular, I thought one of the things that was helpful was it included a, uh, the, a broad statement that was in the proposed regulations regarding the definition that qualified disability expenses include basic living expenses and are not limited to items for which there is a medical necessity or which solely benefit an individual with a disability. And it also brought forth an example of that, of a, of a smartphone that um, would help someone um, with uh, navigation and communication. Um, that's a, a, a brief overview of a few of the items. Glad to, um, glad to take any um, questions. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to turn it over to Christy. Welcome. Good morning. This is Christy, and I wanted to just go ahead and do um, share some highlights of this past quarter. Um, as far as outreach, we did an event which we do and have participated in previously, but this year it was a virtual fair, so we had a virtual page and booth. And I wanted to highlight this because we saw a huge spike in visits to nctreasure.com, the page that we have for NC Able at the time of this event. And I think that's important because it really shows the impact that these partnerships can have. We are continuing to um, build a foundation of organic growth on social media. And we've been very consistent with visits and follow-throughs to the registration site, nc.savewithable.com. 
And on the next slide, um, it really highlights the analytics of the Save with ABLE, where people can find out information and also register for accounts. We've been very consistent with the number of unique visitors. Uh, page views have seen an increase uh, consistently over the last quarter. And what it, I think is very interesting is that our average time on the site has also increased by a full minute. I think this is also coupled with the fact that we have four and a half minutes spent on the NC Treasurer website page. Um, so that's about 10 minutes worth of people learning about the site, I mean, learning about NC ABLE and discovering the benefits. Um, the referrals are also very interesting. We do have organic growth, I mean, organic um, visits to the site, like from Google or Yahoo and things like that. But our top referrer is the NC Treasurer page, which again speaks to our partnerships that we have, because that's the URL that we give to them to find out more about ABLE. And then the others are also resources that have uh, referred their site visitors to our site. And all of this leads to the fact that on January 11th, we surpassed 10 million in NC ABLE account owner assets. We were at 10,073,000. And as of uh, February 6th, we were at uh, just under 10.8 million. So we've seen a huge growth. And even looking at the General Assembly letter, we were at 9.7. We have $1 million in asset growth since that letter was written. Mm -hmm. That letter's gone out, correct? Yeah, I, th I think We're it's in here. for adoption at this meeting. Can we minute. upgrade it then? I mean. And it's gone through. Sure. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't we put It's a million dollars. Why not huh? be more current? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, do that. Do it's, we need a motion to? I'll entertain a motion to uh, allow staff to technically correct the letter going to the uh, General Assembly to reflect the surpassing of $10 million in the AWOL program. So moved, Melinda. Thank you. Second, Ben Wright. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just wasn't thinking about that earlier, and uh, okay. I should have. So. Uh, Motion a second. Any further discussion? Uh, if not, uh, the clerk will call the roll. Okay, very good. Treasurer Folo, you ready? Aye. Commissioner Grace? Aye. Thank you. Marquita Robertson? Aye. Thank you. And Chris Egan? Aye. Very good. The motion passes. Thank you. And I would like, so it surpassed 10 million. It's like, 10 point, 10.795. Yeah. I'd like for the for the first time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I'd like, if you would, just think about putting the word surpass in there. Sure. So that's it. Anyway, thank you, board. And I do have one other. Yes. Just one other quick thing. I mentioned at the last board meeting that we were working on an ncable.org website, and we have made great progress on this site. I do have a development site available. We still have some work to do, but I would like to go ahead and send it out to the board members after the meeting so that you can take a look at our progress. We should be able to go live with this site um, within the next two weeks. So that's going to provide a whole different level of marketing and awareness for NC ABLE. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm going to hand the gavel over to uh, uh, Tom, and we're now here to ready to hear Rich from a census. Great. Thank you all. And for those that uh, don't know me, who may be new committee members, this is Rich DeSilva. I am the National ABLE Alliance Relationship Manager here at the census. Um, before we get into the numbers, just a, a quick few notes that I wanted to pass along. Number one is that the, uh, the National ABLE Alliance has surpassed $150 million in plan assets, uh, which triggers a break point uh, in the pricing schedule. Uh, so as of January 28th, 
the program management fee has declined from 32 basis points down to 30 basis points for all participants. Um, we are going to include that in a supplement, uh, and obviously any states uh, in, within the alliance, including yourselves, of course, uh, that would like to do some sort of a press release or some sort of an announcement, uh, we'd be happy to review that from a marketing perspective and work with you on content. Um, secondly, uh, and Treasurer, you referenced the acquisition. I, I looked it up. It's January 6th that that occurred, and I sent the press release to both Reed and Mary. Uh, just as an FYI, so if you'd like to take a look at that, it's what's on the census website. Um, number three, references to the final ABLE regs were made. Uh, we are working internally uh, with um, a number of cross-functional areas to make sure that the regs are reviewed. Uh, we put together an executive summary that our leadership is currently reviewing uh, that will be distributed to all the states in the alliance uh, in rather short order. Uh, our attention at the moment is to figure out operationally what we need to change from both the technology and an operational perspective to make sure that we can support this uh, sooner rather than later. Um, technology changes at our side sometimes take longer, so we want to identify those as soon as possible. Uh, but we're working internally as well as with the NAST working groups to make sure that we have a good handle on exactly what is changed and, and so forth. So that kind of complements what uh, was discussed earlier. Um, a quick a census update, we are all still remote with you aside from our mail operations. Uh, the expectation is that mid-year we will be uh, start to return to the offices pending, uh, you know, it's obviously a fluid situation with the pandemic and the, and the vaccination distribution, uh, but the expectation is that we're going to do some sort of a pilot program to send employees back to the offices mid-year. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on, on how that goes. Um, and then lastly, uh, Mary, I believe you had requested that we include appropriations data uh, in this document, which has been done in the appendix. So if there's anything in specific that you wanted to take a look at there, we can certainly go through that. Uh, Don Roach, who's my counterpart um, in the on the relationship, has provided that information on, on slide, as you can see, 14. So if no one has any questions on that information, I can jump right back to slide three on the metric. So the story here is a good one. Um, is contributions were increased, particularly in December. Uh, and I think part of it, part of it is because uh, we're starting to see people go back to school. Uh, personally, I've got two college age children and they had a number of their friends take gap years. Um, and now they're going back to school. So you're seeing, you're seeing contributions increase because, you know, for that reason, as well as um, the fact that it was December. So positive story. We also had um, a really uh, good market as well. Um, so as a result, we had an asset increase of 18% from the end of Q3 to the end of Q4. Now, as you can see here, we're, we're showing 9.8 million. Um, as we know from the previous segment that we're over 10 million now, now into February. Uh, with market growth and continued contributions. Uh, but our, the, what we're showing an asset growth of 18% from Q3 to Q4, which is certainly very positive. Uh, we had an increase in accounts in 77. Um, and as you can see there, uh, we had in Q4 about 112 new accounts and uh, 40 accounts. So all in all, a very, very positive story. Slide four, please. So this is no different than what we have seen in previous quarters. It's very consistent in terms of the mechanism that people use to make their contributions. Electron electronic bank transfers uh, continues to be the top uh, mechanism uh, by almost uh, double, uh, followed by checks, um, uh, automatic uh, investment payments, and then uh, gifts and payroll. So this, this really hasn't changed uh, in terms of order um, at all. Next slide, please. In terms of disability and eligibility type, again, this hasn't changed either in terms of the order. Uh, development of disorders followed by intellectual disabilities and psychiatric disorders continue uh, to be the top. Um, what is notable on this slide is that the average account balances have increased substantially uh, due to both um, the contributions as well as uh, the favorable market conditions over the last quarter. In fact, some of these average account balances have increased by nearly a thousand 
uh, which is pretty substantial over the course of just one quarter. Any questions so far? Okay, next slide, please. So in terms of closed accounts, we've had 258 closed accounts since inception. Um, in December, we had 16. Uh, again, there's nothing here that really jumps out at me. It's pretty standard as far as what we expect to see uh, with respect to behavior. Um, Ten additional in, uh, individuals took full disbursements, so that increased from 67 to 77, uh, which is a little on the high side. Um, I think that that can probably be attributed to the uncertainty regarding the pandemic that we saw an immediate slight uptick in full disbursements. Uh, but aside from that, um, you know, pretty consistent with what we've seen in previous quarters. Slide seven, please. So this is interesting because the checking account option typically had close to 30% in assets. Um, it's down to 24, and the reason for that is market um, fluctuation or market growth. Uh, with the growth of the aggressive, the moderately, moderately aggressive, et cetera, options, uh, they increased uh, just through the market fluctuation. Uh, which by default uh, reduced the assets in the checking account option. It obviously doesn't it doesn't have that, uh, that same market uh, exposure. So it's 24% now as opposed to 27 uh, in, at the end of Q3. Uh, but again, in terms of the asset size, we, we see the same, uh, roughly the same allocation, uh, checking followed by growth, followed by aggressive, et cetera, down the line. Uh, but again, what's notable is the uh, decrease in the assets in the checking option just due to market, uh, market change, market growth. Next slide, please. In asset ranking, this really hasn't changed either. North Carolina remains fifth uh, with about 7% of the assets in the alliance. Um, now, obviously, that number is over 10 million. This is as of December 31st. Uh, Pennsylvania continues to lead the charge. And again, I think that can be directly attributed to the appropriations uh, that is shown in the appendix if we wanted to take a look at that later, uh, later on in the presentation, uh, followed by Illinois. Minnesota and Colorado. So it's the same top five order that it was last quarter. Next slide, please. With, uh, this is I'll Fred. turn it over to Paul. This is Fred. Let me interrupt. Do you think we've surpassed Colorado or do you think Colorado went up also? Colorado went up also, yes. I mean, yeah. okay. So we're still fifth. Yes. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I checked that number before when I saw the growth um, in the month and a half. They they experienced a similar uh, similar market um, growth that uh, that North Carolina did. Yeah, but it's very close. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Paul Supe. I will turn it over to you to cover the portfolio performance. All right, thanks, Rich. Uh, I'll start here with uh, the uh, on. Slide nine or yeah, slide nine. Um, with the market values of a little over, uh, a little under 10 million at the end of the year, uh, the good part is that the uh, more aggressive portfolios have kind of a higher asset value, so it's probably going to be a little bit more stickier assets. Uh, hopefully, these are long term horizon uh, for, for the participants, uh, but yes, it's in this portion of, uh, of the investment lineup. Uh, it was kind of a roller coaster year as far as returns uh, with the corona, uh, coronavirus. Uh, February and March, obviously, a large downturn uh, in equities, uh, but we've had a V-shaped recovery, and we actually ended up having a very strong year within the markets, both on the fixed income side and on the equity side. Uh, with the more uh, risk, risk on portfolios, actually having the better years. Uh, very strong fourth quarter uh, w with the higher uh, risk riskier assets. We, we got uh, better returns, over 15% return for the quarter for the aggressive portfolio, down to uh, just under 2% return for the conservative portfolio. Uh, for the full year 2020, uh, we had returns that, that range from just over 4%. To over 15 and a half percent 
uh, for the year. So kind of a normal distribution of returns here, uh, the, the higher returns go into the higher risk assets. Uh, any questions on the por uh, portfolio performance? Now we'll switch to the underlying performance, the next slide. So here we have the equity performance uh, for the underlying equity funds. Uh, for most of the last three months, it's been uh, the large caps that have been now performing. Uh, so we have uh, the uh, last quarter, they, they still had a very strong return of over 12% but it was the small and mid caps uh, really doing well and, and coming back strong. Uh, the small caps were really hurt most uh, in February and March when, when the coronavirus first uh, caused the, the shutdown across the US. Uh, but within the last quarter, they really uh, uh, come back very strongly and actually had a stronger year altogether in 2020, uh, returning over 30% for the year. Uh, both US and uh, and, and international markets did very well uh, for, for the quarter. Uh, U.S. markets outperforming for the, for the year overall, uh, and emerging markets outperforming the developed markets uh, for, uh, for the year and for the quarter. Uh, the real kind of uh, the lagger of, of all the kind of the, the sectors was the real estate market. We do have uh, exposure to, to real estate within the portfolios. Um, they, they, of course, were hurt most with a, kind of the corporate side of real estate. And uh, we, we do have uh, a, a switch kind of within the fund uh, to a more broad real estate exposure uh, that happened after June. Uh, first half of the year, there was a little bit more of a uh, ex exposure to commercial real estate. They made that a broader uh, exposure in, in the second half of the year. So I think it's, uh, it's kind of more towards the uh, more modern sense of, of real estate with uh, exposure to uh, kind of cell, cell phone towers and, and things like that sort and more kind of modern uh, real estate exposure. So it's, it's much more broad and it has done much better in the last six months. Uh, overall, it didn't hurt, hurt the portfolio too much uh, and actually had a very positive uh, response in the last six months. Uh, let's move to the next slide for the fixed income. So on the fixed income side, we saw uh, uh, positive returns across the board all year uh, through all kind of sectors of the fixed income side, both domestic and fixed income, with rates falling down that boosts up performance. Um, for the fourth quarter, we saw international fixed income outperforming U.S. fixed income, and we saw uh, over the year longer duration outperforming uh, the short duration. Uh, with interest rates very low, we expect this to kind of be opposite going forward. We expect uh, rates to eventually start rising from this point since they're near zero. Uh, our portfolios are, are more geared on that short side, so we should have some good perfect, per, protection uh, for when rates do rise. Any questions on the underlying performance? Uh, the only other point I'll, I'll make here is uh, on the iShares International Aggregate Bond. Uh, they did kind of lower their uh, expense rate, underlying expense ratio uh, at the end of December from nine basis points down to eight. So we'll look at a uh, little cost savings there within our portfolio. Now I'll head back to Rich. Okay, my presentation has concluded unless folks had questions about the appropriations. Mary, would you like to take a look at that or would you, did you want to do that offline? Um, Rich, thanks for including that in the report and as you stated, that's on page 14. Um, that was a topic that came up in our last board meeting um, as a request from the board to include that information on an ongoing basis. So if there are questions from the board, uh, we'd be happy to take them. But otherwise, I, I think it's reference material. Thank you all. 
all very much. I guess we're now down to our uh, public comment section. Anybody sign up for public comment? No. There are none. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll deem the uh, public comment section closed. I uh, want to uh, mention, as many of you have already received an email, uh, that was from Tom uh, Talby uh, on behalf of uh, Mary Beth. <laughs> Tom couldn't have done it. Uh, has announced that she's decided to uh, uh, retire and uh, her effective date is going to be July 1st of this year. And uh, she had a 20 year career with Bank of America. She joined, joined our retirement system in 2012 and has led our team on a number of significant initiatives. And the ABLE program was launched in 2017. Four hundred one k. Yeah. <coughs> Even larger than California, as far as the teams. Yeah, I think. I think we're close. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so now the total defined contribution plan serves almost three hundred thousand participants whose total balance is uh, close to three point zero. So, I'd like for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did no one hear that? <laughs> I don't know. They did. They did. All right. Tom, you want to say anything? You know, uh, you know I, I thank Mary. Uh, this is Tom Causey, Director of Retirement System. Uh, thank Mary for all the work she's done and helping me this, uh, especially this past, what, year and a half or so, <laughs> educating me on the different issues with ABLE and, and other issues. And um, I'm going to miss her. And uh, her laugh especially, those of you that have heard her laugh, <laughs> it echoes through the building. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> but, no, I, I do thank her for her support. Um, and uh, it's going to be hard to fill her shoes, but we're going we're gonna to try. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Um, any other board members would like to say anything? Hi, it's Marquita. I'd like to speak. I, um, I've worked with Mary, um, I think starting in 2014, and we worked on many different projects and things together and really grown to respect and admire her a lot. She's, um, one of the smartest people that I know, and I think I've shared this with her before, and just has um, a lot to share, and it's just an overall great person, and you will definitely be missed, but I'm very excited for you to be entering into this next phase of life. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you, Marquita. I really appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else? This is Chris Egan. I, just a couple of quick words, but I've known Mary since she came into the position, at least focusing on NC ABLE, and really have been impressed with not only your openness to learn and to understand circumstances and to become a strong advocate for individuals with disabilities, but to make a point of spending time directly with individuals and families and being present, answering questions, building relationships, building trust, which I think has gone a long way to helping to create a comfort level with opening accounts and, and that you clearly had a, a huge influence on people 
um, opening able account. So thank you for your commitment, for your efforts, and you'll certainly be missed. Thank you, Chris. I Anyone? appreciate that. Mary, it's, Mary, it's Melinda. I, uh, I echo all those sentiments. It's been a pleasure working with you these last years. Um, every time I have sent a family your way because I couldn't answer a question or we couldn't, you have always been more than gracious and um, our families, our families uh, that we represent are also going to miss your, your leadership, but we will, we will carry the torch and, and hope you won't be a stranger. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I'm piling in Ben right here, Mary, <laughs> you are first class all the way. Um, I, I feel like this board and everybody involved with this, has been in very good hands in your hands. So you will be uh, greatly missed, but we wish you uh, much happiness in this next phase of life. Thanks for everything. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate all those comments. It's, I do have a little bit more time, so now I, I feel like I might be, maybe I should leave on a high note, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Mary, Thank you. You have the floor. Well, I just truly, I appreciate all of those comments. Um, you know, I always think about my uh, time within this department um, as working as part of a, a really wonderful team, and that goes for the treasurer and senior leadership, for our um, SRP team and our ABLE team. Um, it, no one ever does this alone. It's always the representation of a lot of work. Um, from everybody on staff. Um, we're lucky that we do get to work in a very close way, in a very collaborative way. And um, it's always interesting, you know, Christy is, is one of our newer folks, even though she's been here for over a year. Um, but just those observations of, you know, wow, this team works so closely together and just such a high level of um, collaboration and um, hoping to not only work hard but have a little bit of fun along the way too so i'll greatly miss everybody here and um just look on my years here uh, very fondly and i um, happy to have been able to contribute thank you treasurer thank you appreciate your service and uh with that in uh not in memory but in honor of of mary <laughs> Uh, I'll, sometimes I say memory, so that's not correct. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> I'll be careful driving home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Melinda. Okay. Thank you, Melinda. Second, Ben Wright. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Very appropriate for the YouTube to make that motion and second. So, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, the clerk, the clerk will call the roll. Okay, Treasurer Falwell. Aye. Commissioner Grace. Aye. Thank you, Marquita Robertson. Aye. And Chris Egan. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion and passes. I apologize again for being a couple minutes late. There's a lot, lots going on. So uh, we're here by adjourn. Thank you for your attendance uh, by phone and in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. <laughs>